Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I just want to do a uh, video today looking at the uh, the receiver for this little tramping radio. Um, what we have here is um, the various components which are now finished, wired up as a um, single conversion superhead. Um, I'm just using this copper board here to do a, a shakedown and just to confirm that um, everything's working nicely together and playing nicely together uh, before I try and make it smaller to fit into um, into the container which I'll talk about later on. So in terms of what we see here, uh, top left hand corner we see the uh, that 40 metre band pass filter that came out of EMRFD. Uh, I think I talked, I spoke about that a, a couple of videos back. Uh, no change to that, you'll recall that um, the way I'm going to use this is that particular filter there is going to be shared between transmit and receive. So the antenna will come in um, straight into that bandpass filter and then the output of that filter will then through a relay will be switched between uh, the receive circuit or the transmit circuit. Um, so that's what I intend to do there. Um, over the back there is that uh, antenna amplifier that we looked at um, in the last video. Uh, the only change I've done there is to um, just play around with that output transformer just um, for, for, for playing purposes here put that back to a, a 10 turn to 5 turn uh, which gives me a, a turns ratio of 5 over two, uh, 10 over 2 say again 10 over 5 equals 2 uh, 2 squared equals 4 so therefore my impedance transformation which is 50 ohms from the tough 3 times 4 equals 200 ohms which is what I'm presenting to um, uh, to the collector of that particular transform, uh, that um, that amplifier there, that transistor. Now, otherwise, uh, no change at all. Um, the output of that antenna amplifier is now going down here to our mixer, uh, a tough three, um, and the other input. So that's the RF port into that tough three, and the other port there uh, coming in is our variable frequency uh, from our VFO over here, the SI fifty three fifty one. Uh, and then the output of that tough 3 is our intermediate frequency, our IF. Uh, that's then going into the first IF, IF amplifier, which we'll look at in a sec, uh, into our crystal filter, um, and then into our second IF amplifier, and then into our product detector. The product detector over here for the other input has got the BFO, the beat frequency oscillator, again coming from clock 2 of that SI3, uh, SI5351, uh, and then the output of that uh, second Tough three, uh, like I say, acting as a product detector, is our audio, which is then going into our audio amplifier. Got a bit of a dirty pot there. Um, and then that's our little speaker there that came out of an old little VHF handheld radio, just sitting in a bit of a, uh, a plastic container there as a speaker box. Um, other than that, uh, got our 12 volts coming in. Uh, I've got a little uh, 5 volt regulator down here, which is providing 5 volts for the display, the microcontroller in the SI5351. Just leaving a little, uh, the little, um, uh, say again, the, um, the, the little loader board there for programming that um, um, that controller, that microcontroller there. Because uh, I just want to show you later on playing around with both high side uh, and low side injection. So before we get to that, just in terms of the uh, the two intermediate frequency. Um, amplifiers, the, the two IF amps, uh, again uh, went with the same sort of configuration as the antenna amplifier, so I've got a quiescent DC current of 5 milliamps. Uh, the only other difference with this particular, or these two amplifiers uh, compared with the uh, antenna amplifier is the frequency of operation for this amplifier is now 9 megahertz as opposed to 7 megahertz. So therefore beta AC is now 300 divided by 9 equals 33 as opposed to the yeah, 10 amplifier which had 300 divided by 7. Um, other than that, uh, no change at all. So, um, same setup with the trim pot, the 1K trim pot in parallel with 330 ohms to, get, to give the 240. Uh, again, that 100 nanofarad capacitor sitting on the wiper arm. You can see one just there and the other one over here. That's on the wiper arm of those two trim pots just to allow me to tweak the gain of those, um, otherwise no change at all. Uh, in terms of the input and the output transformers for those amplifiers, one, two, uh, three, and four, uh, the output of the tough three from that, that first mixer is 50 ohms, um, RN for the amplifier is 165 ohms, so therefore I need to have a five, uh, 50 to, to 165 uh, the output of that amplifier, again, I'm just going to run with presenting 200 ohms to the uh, collector. Gives me 
uh, 200 up to a thousand ohms for the uh, filter and conversely the output of the filter again is a thousand ohms into our 165 uh, for RN of the second amp the output it's sort of standard 200 ohms again down to 50 um, which gives me the the one two three four uh, transformers over here so 5 to 9 7 to 16 7 to 17 and 5 to 10 um, Again, the smallest, the smallest number there is fine in terms of that sort of general rule of thumb of four to five times uh, the load hanging off it. Um, I'll, I won't go into any details of that. I'll have this all sitting up uh, on the blog that it can be looked at later on. So in terms of the, uh, the configuration um, that we have here, you'll recall, just to sort of go over it again, um, those two amplifiers there, that's the first IF amp there and the second one down here, uh, and the crystal filter is fixed and that particular loop there, that, uh, let's call it the IF um, block, is going to be shared between transmit and receive. Uh, there's going to be two relays um, which are not on this board, this board's just for shaking down the receive circuitry, but those uh, two relays there will effectively switch um, the inputs and the outputs of the two TUF3 mixers. So in one, in, in one case, uh, the ports will be configured as such that um, on receive, this will be a mixer, this will be a product detector, uh, and then on transmit, uh, it'll be the other way around. What will become, so what was the mixer now becomes the balanced modulator, uh, and then what was the product detector becomes the, uh, the mixer that switches that, um, that RF, or that IF more the point, up to our desired frequency uh, for transmit, um, not showing there, that little amplifier there is our power amplifier and obviously our microphone amplifier here. Uh, and you'll recall the reason why I'm doing that is, uh, and it works really well, I've done it before, um, is I don't have to have any signals crossing this, um, crossing this gap here um, and causing um, instability problems. I can now have a nice big shield sitting through here, nothing has to go across uh, and, and it works really well. Um, so that's the plan there. Now that uh, crystal filter there, uh, I elected to just copy straight what I saw on the board that this particular filter came off. So uh, right next door to the inputs and the output of that filter was an 18 picofarad capacitor to earth. Uh, there was 100 uh, nanofarads um, isolation capacitors and then on the other side with that one, one kilo ohm resistor. Uh, on the setup over here, uh, you'll see the two little capacitors there, those are the 18 picofarad capacitors between the output and earth. Um, I'm not worrying about, in this right next door to the filter, those 200 nanofarad capacitors, uh, because my two transformers has DC isolation on the input and the output. But I do have that 1k ohm resistor, you can just sort of see it there sitting on the board, there's one sitting there, and there's one just over, I think just around the corner there, hiding there, which is the, uh, the 1k ohm uh, sitting on the output of those two the input and the output are directly to earth. So that's the configuration of that. Rightio, so the only other thing I wanted to talk about before we sort of arc it up is um, what I've been playing around with in terms of the injection. Now I think that's all on the picture there. So there's two options there for uh, setting up and I won't go into any details of why one would be any better than the other one. Um, but we have what's called low side injection and high side injection. So I've been playing around with both. Uh, so for low side injection, this bottom one here, uh, we have our, in both cases, we have our desired frequency uh, in the 40 meter band, so I'll just notionally say 7 megahertz here, uh, with its lower side band intelligence. Um, somehow I need to get that information up to our IF frequency. So I can either mix it with a signal that's sitting down here, so sitting below it, which would be called low side, or I can mix it with another frequency which is um, much higher, or high side injection, or higher than that frequency, um, which would then be um, high side injection. The advantages of low side injection is, well, one advantage, if anything, is when that gets transformed up, um, the relationship between uh, that frequency and its intelligence remains intact, so we don't get any kind of reversal of the sideband. Um, so if I if I move it up uh, correctly and have it sitting right here, 
that intelligence will sit right in the pass band of that particular filter. That filter has a, a centre frequency of 8998200 um, hertz, um, and on either side of that centre frequency is 1.5k, so 1500 hertz, with an overall bandwidth of 3 kilohertz. Um, for high side injection though, uh, things are a little bit different. When that gets transformed up, uh, up in frequency to our IF, that lower side band actually now sits on the uh, on the upper side of our beat frequency. Um, again, it's not impossible, but you just need to work out what your BFO frequency is going to be in order to get that sitting just right. And then when in the product detector, when you mix that intelligence there with that beat frequency, you recover the audio. So in terms of trying to work out what that figure there is, um, I had to work out um, a few things first. So for low side injection, my BFO is sitting at 9 megs. Uh, I just said before that that center frequency of the filter is 8996400, uh, which works out to be 1800 hertz difference, uh, which is made up of 1500 hertz or 1.5 kilohertz of passband plus 300 hertz of, let's call that dead space. Um, we recall that our audio for our voice is roughly 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz, so therefore we need to have um, that lowest frequency that we want to detect in terms of our intelligence 300 hertz away from our BFO. Um, if we then go at the other side, we've got another 1500 hertz, another 300 hertz there, and we get to that point there. So in other words, our 9 megahertz minus 300, minus 1500, minus 1500, minus 300, equals 8996400, which is that frequency right there. That's used for the BFO. Okay, so what we're going to do now, it's going to um, key up the transmitter, um, a little test transmitter here, uh, transmit a very small signal into a dummy load, uh, and then uh, look to detect that with the, uh, with the radio. So it's going to be using... Um, for a start, uh, low side injection. So in other words, we're going to have this configuration here. Um, so coming out of uh, this wire here is going to be our beat frequency minus our frequency. So sitting down here, and then coming out of this one here, going into our product detector, is going to be um, 9 megahertz. Right, yeah, so let's just... Uh, get something playing, just a, uh, a podcast and we'll just key up the transmitter Actually, if I just tune off frequency there so there we are now if I just go then go to um, upper sideband it disappears of course, back to lower sideband and, and we're back again right so um, so yeah, so that's, that's uh, low side injection um, and because I've now left this um, this this trans this uh, program ca programming cable in place, I'm now going to just going to quickly squirt up uh, the other configuration, which would be high side injection, and we'll just do a comparison. So it's going to leave that like that. Okay, close enough. So let me just now go across to the computer. Let me just comment out that one. Uncomment that, go down to here, comment that, uncomment that, and squirt. Right, so I uh, should see those lights flash very shortly. Um, all right, and now we're actually squirting up that second configuration. So again, reloading the whole software with high side injection, and we'll just see how that sounds different. Can you hear the difference here? I'm not quite sure how well that comes through on the um, comes through on the uh, on the audio there, but I think it sounds slightly better in that configuration. So at the moment that's high side, and I'll just go back and repeat the process of going back to low side. Got a dirty pot there, a bit of scratchiness. 
Okay, so again, that's high side, and now it is going back to low side. So once the lights flash and we come back online, it's rebooted with uh, low side. You can just hear the difference there. Slightly uh, less low frequencies. Um, the voices themselves are about right, so I don't want to try and shift in the pass band whereabouts um, that audio is sitting, but I think in terms of audio quality, I'm going to go with the other configuration. In other words, go with a high side injection for now. So that's what I'll look at doing. Um, what else was worth talking about? So we talked about the um, the mixers, the product detector, we talked about the outputs of um, that clock there, so what I didn't mention, um, uh, when this relay swaps over and we uh, go between transmit and receive, what I'm also doing in software is, you can't quite see down here, but there's a little voltage divider there, and I'm sensing, um, it's not wired up, but I will be sensing the 12 volts when it gets applied to the power amplifier. So when it gets uh, moved to transmit, that will send a logic one through to the board, and the board goes, ah, well I'm now in transmit. And what it will effectively do is it will just flip. So what was uh, being output on clock zero will now go out in clock two, and um, in fact that should be clock two. Uh, and then what's going out on clock two will now go out in clock zero. You can see there, so clock zero and clock two. Um, not using clock one just to get a little bit more separation between the two there. Um, not sure if that's a good idea or not, but it seems to be a bit of a, um, a standard way of configuring these um, at the moment. So, um, so yeah, so uh, that's what happens there in software. Um, and I think at this stage of the game, the only other thing I'm, I'm sort of still toying with my, in my mind's eye is if I'm going to try and squeeze this into uh, what is the current idea, which is that size box, or um, am I going to get a little bit cunning and, and, and see if I can squeeze it into this box? So I'm I'm secretly going to try and make it work uh, in this size. Um, it's going to be really, really tight, but um, again, I'm not using service-mounted devices, so I'm, I'm making life a little bit hard for myself. But um, you know, the worst the, at the end of the day, if, if I have to use this box, then so be it. You know, I'll live with that quite happily. Um, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, so in, in order to, to make that work, I've sort of been playing around with um, some boards. So we get this, this is going to be the two um, sides of the IF. We've got our, um, our mixer and the switching relay that we saw before. In here will go um, um, that amplifier, so I'll desolder those parts, transfer them into here. Uh, and then the plan is that those two boards there will sit back to back on a, um, on a separating piece of copper, double sided copper board. Um, at the end will support the uh, the crystal filter there. So um, if I can make those as short as I can, so sort of down there somewhere, then I should have room down this end for the, uh, we'll call it the, the, uh, the VFO. Um, and we should have room on the right hand side over there for the, uh, let me just move that a bit, for the um, audio amplifier. Um, and then still have enough room with a, with a, another board coming down here to have the power amplifier over here. So that's still the plan. Uh, like I say, if it doesn't work, then I'll go to the higher size. Uh, I'm sort of thinking for the power amplifier that I might play around with uh, two N3053s three's in a push-pull configuration. Um, uh, but yeah, sort of just sort of playing with ideas on that one at the moment. Right, so I think that's all I wanted to cover off. Um, like I say, just a shakedown configuration. Um, Noise-wise, it's pretty good actually. So if I was to go back to uh, the live antenna, so that's on the live antenna there, with our atmospheric noise coming through. And if I was now just to go to dummy load on that, we can see the, the noise drops right off. So I'm pretty good. So uh, from what I can see, it's, it seems to be performing quite well and, and not producing too much internal noise, uh, which is good. Um, hopefully later on we'll come across. Um, some signals at the moment the band's pretty dead, I'm not hearing anything at all. But later on if I, uh, if I hear something of use I'll, um, I'll record it, but at the moment I'll just start shifting my thoughts towards um, the transmit side of the house. 
in terms of the transmit side, what I've found in the past, um, if I do what I've just done now, in other words, set it up as a um, uh, as a test configuration here, if I get everything all nicely nailed up and and uh, configured correctly, the, the, the conversion to a transceiver is very straightforward and I've had no problems at all. So uh, with those changeover relays, um, it's just a matter of making up now um, the microphone amplifier here. Uh, and if I just feed that then straight into the switchover relay here, um, everything just works nicely. Everything's all nicely lined up for passing through the filter um, and then with the power amplifier to get the power coming out. So that's one of the advantages why I do this, get it all configured correctly because it just makes the, the conversion to a transceiver uh, so much, well, it just, it's, it's pretty seamless. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to re-go over again, um, I, uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video, uh, the, the software that I'm using for this setup here, um, uh, I dropped the 7, so this is a, a, a 40 meter rig, so the frequency is always going to start with 7, so I don't bother displaying it. So um, I just go straight into the um, hundreds of hertz, tens of hertz, 1 kilohertz, and then hundred, hundreds of hertz. Um, this the defaults to 1 kilohertz tuning, uh, but if I wanted to go sort of finer, uh, it's just a matter of pushing the button down, rotating in either direction, doesn't matter, and you'll see that little LED pop on, release, and now I'm into fine tune. Again, once you've sort of got things nicely lined up, push the button, go in either direction, doesn't matter, light turns out, release, and then you're back to one kilohertz. Uh, the little push button switch there um, goes through th three levels of brightness, so uh, full brightness, down another couple of levels, and then turns off, and then back to bright again. So it must be four, actually, one, two, three, four. Uh, just to basically um, save a bit of battery. Um, again, I'm not quite sure exactly how much that's drawing. Um, I do remember measuring that some time ago. I'd have to go back through my, my notes to, to see what that is. Anyway, so that's all I'm going to touch on for today, just to uh, sort of show that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it seems to be working quite well. Might just have a little bit of a think about if I want to change these IFMs in any way, but uh, at the moment, um, I don't think I will. I'm quite happy with that. Um, that little speaker over there is not too bad. Um, like I say, came out of a... a um, little VHF handheld. Uh, I think I'll still mount that sort of maybe just sitting up here above the uh, the um, audio amplifier. Should be nice and low profile so it just gives me an option and obviously a little very simple little switch to switch between headphones which would be the normal uh, operation uh, and that little speaker as needed. Anyway so that's all I'm going to do. It's time to ramble now like I've done before so I will uh, sign off and we'll see you next time. Cheers all.